What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a little water test with an iPhone 6 Plus. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in there and see if it survives. Uh, it's pretty cold outside. It's freezing. Like literally it's freezing. So this tub of water here will will freeze up. So uh, we can go ahead and do that. And first I just want to check out this phone. Make sure everything is still good and working. It hasn't froze yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and start up the timer. Do our stopwatch. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and drop it in. So there we go, it is on its way. We will see how long it lasts. Well, I decided to do this water test to see if this phone will survive water damage. I know there's been lately the newer phones are water resistant. The water doesn't affect them that much. I just wanted to see if the 6 Plus was uh, affected by it. Um, I know sometimes you'll get a phone that you just barely get wet and it'll just power off. It'll start acting weird. And there'll be other phones you'll try to do a test on them to see if they're uh, affected by water and they work perfectly fine. So I just decided to do my test to see what will happen. And it was so cold outside that I decided just to take it and freeze it all together to see what would happen. So it took the phone about three hours to die and the phone died because the battery had drained down and it just died because the battery turned off. Um, I don't think the water did much damage to the phone. It didn't really seem like it was affecting the phone that much. Um, it, the phone did later on freeze but I wasn't able to see any kind of problems with the phone. There were a couple areas in the video that I was able to see that the phone was kind of glitching or the screen was kind of moving around and I think that might have been because of the water but other than that it didn't really get affected and those parts are coming up here in a little bit. And those were the areas. It's just a little bit of flickering, the screen moving to half and back to up. Obviously, I wasn't touching it, so the phone did kind of get affected by the water just a little bit. I'm not quite sure how it read the sensor. I believe the home button was getting selected or was getting hit to make it do that. And right around this point, around the one hour mark, uh, you're starting to see the ice form a little layer on the very top of the water. Uh, so it was starting to freeze about after an hour. Um, I left it to freeze overnight. The phone had turned off at about three hours. So I just uh, figured no point in recording a black phone and fast forwarding it. So um, this was about three hours worth of footage and I tried to shrink it up as much as I could. Um, I think I shrunk it, fast forwarded it about 25 or 30 times faster than normal time. So that's pretty sweet just to kind of help past the time and then one thing that I noticed is you can kind of see some of the ice move around as it forms so that was pretty cool just to watch and, and, and see that happen uh, fast forward it shows it a whole lot better than what it was looking like in real life and as you guys can see this video is made of a lot of little clips um, I did have a problem recording this video because the camera kept freezing. Uh, it was so cold out that the camera would freeze and it would just stop recording. It took about 15 to 20 minutes segments of clips and then it would just stop recording because it got so cold. So I would have to go out there and change it between two cameras, bring one in, warm it up, and then switch it out as it went. So I tried to catch it uh, 15 minute segments, 10 to 15, but sometimes I didn't and there's a little break in the time. And as you guys can see, it is getting a little bit darker. Uh, it's getting darker outside. I started about 12, and I didn't think it would take this long. But uh, it is winter, and it's cold out here, and the sun goes down a whole lot faster than what it does in the summer. So it was starting to get dark, and I was kind of getting worried a little bit that I might not have enough time. I didn't know how long the phone would last. But uh, it was starting to get down on the battery life. Uh, it was really starting to drain at this point. It went really quick. Uh, once it hit 20%, it seemed to slow down, and it took longer to drain that last 20%. So somewhere between the 2 hour 18 mark and the 2 hour and 30 mark, the low battery warning popped up and it did come up on the phone. 
to say that it was a low battery warning and right around that time it started to get a bit darker the camera wasn't able to capture as much light so it does look a little bit darker and the ice was building up getting a little bit thicker so it's harder to see uh, how much time was remaining so at this point we're at two hours and 32 minutes and there was about another uh, hour after this As the ice was getting thicker, I was kind of starting to get hard to read uh, what the timer was at, and it was hard to see how much battery life was left on the phone. Um, it was, since I missed the low battery pop-up, I did want to see the phone power off, and I wanted to see it die, so I kept a close eye on it. Um, it was really kind of hard to see, but even I tried to zoom in and see what, what the reading was at, but even with that, I didn't have much luck. The phone lasted three hours, uh, 25 minutes and 49 seconds to be exact. Um, I was able to read the time. I was able to see it uh, before it did die. So here it goes. Here goes the phone dying. I slowed it down to regular speed. So here we go. Here goes the drop. Dropping it about shoulder height. Try to make it land flat. Three, two, one. So here we are. I just uh, did the drop test and the phone does work. I just uh, checked the screen. I let it thaw out. I let it melt and I gave it a full charge. So the phone is fully charged up. Um, as you guys can see, the screen does turn on. But I did notice that the screen had some problems um, just functioning properly. Um, it does the buttons, the physical buttons actually still work. But as far as the screen goes, it does not want to cooperate. Every now and then I'll get lucky and something will work. But usually it just kind of turns off. So everything's kind of the same just like it used to be. Like I said, it's just kind of selective now as when it wants to work, when it wants to turn on. So... Uh, in a way, um, the phone did survive. The screen still works, I guess, uh, to a degree. And I'm not sure if it's electronics that got fried or if it's just a touch screen, the LCD, something in there getting messed up. But uh, there you guys have it. There's the conclusion of this test. Uh, the phone still did turn on, charged back to 100%. Uh, it still turns on. The physical buttons here work. Just the touch screen every now and then starts to kind of tweak out and, and not work properly so that's all i got for you guys in this test uh after three hours it did uh three hours and some change it did finally turn off but it did not die because of water it turned off just because the battery died so pretty cool test if you guys like this be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like it be sure to subscribe uh check out my, my test playlist i'll also have a bunch of different testing videos uh there in that playlist as well so be sure to check that out and that's all I got for you guys in this one. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.